in which black humour turns to abysmal horror, dry laughter to appalled silence. Now, exactly where that moment comes depends on your own ability to stomach murderous satire and deliberately repulsive subject matter. For the filmmakers, it comes about two-thirds of the way through in a sequence which actively demands that the audience either turn away or walk out. For some of you, however, it may come the moment we first meet Man Bites Dog's serial-killing anti-hero, the cheeky chappy with a smile on his lips and a gun in his hand, in whose company we're being asked to spend the next couple of hours. Shot in grainy handheld black and white, the film set out to parody the kind of slice-of-life docu-soap TV of which we've all seen rather a lot recently. Specifically, the filmmakers wanted to show how the presence of a film crew can affect the world around us, how the reality which we see played out on the screens may be nothing more than a performance played out for the benefit of the cameras, who are in turn simply giving us, the viewers, what we want. We demand shocking news stories, hence the newspaper editor's maxim that when dog bites man, no one cares, but when man bites dog, that's a story. So what the thrill-seeking audience get is a lively amoral odyssey which starts out in the genre of broad farce and then gradually descends into something altogether more disturbing. Blurring the lines between fiction and reality, the film's directors and producers appear on screen using their own real first names, notably Remy, the stupidly engaging psychopath who's spurred on by dreams of fame and fortune to commit ever grosser acts of violence. As for director Andre, he starts out proclaiming an editorial distance from his subject, but becomes gradually more and more implicated in his vile antics, until finally there is no distance between journalist and murderer. And that's when Man Bites Dog turns on its audience, attacking them for watching and enjoying any of this in the first place. Now, this may not be anything shockingly new. John McNaughton's Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer worked through many of these ideas before, and regular viewers of extreme cinema will know that they also crop up in the work of Austrian director Michael Haneke. What is surprising is that in the UK, Man Bites Dog was passed completely uncut on both film and video, a decision that the BBFC made long before the film achieved notoriety, when the censors thought that no one would be that interested in a black and white Belgian art house movie how wrong they were, but luckily to our advantage, because it means that we can now bring you one of the most controversial films of the 90s in its definitive, disgusting director's cut.